Right, so here we go. I'm just going to power up the um, PC that I've been working on. And I'll just wait for the signal to sync. Um, it is a digital signal, but um, it will have to lock on. Uh, it's a bit of a strange PC, this, because it doesn't seem to want to fill the whole of the screen. Um, but at least it's visible, the whole, whole of the screen is visible, unlike the uh, Pentium 4, which seemed to want to chop off the first character, first two characters of the uh, output of the screen. So it's just going to boot now, temporary system, and OK, we've already got a failure, and OK, I think... I know what that might be. I think I've not set the correct file name of the kernel by the looks of it because it says LFS 6.3. So um, what we can do here is go to the command line. If we do root 0, 0,9 for the partition we want to work with, uh, HD rather, and then um, let's do kernel forward slash Yep, that's the partition. So we want to be in tools, boot, and yeah, it's um, this file here. So it's VM Linux CLFS and then the version number. So that's what the problem is. So I'll just press escape there, edit this by pressing E and just adjust this. And I'll have to make the same adjustments when it's booted. So hopefully this will get it to boot, so press enter there, now if I press B to boot, yes it's booting now, so that's good, and yep we're in, so that's all very good apart from that initial bit, so if I log in, you'll notice I've logged in with the root username but there's no password prompt because the passwords haven't been set yet, so I need to, uh, let's have a look at boot, oops, mount slash dev slash sda2 which is our boot partition onto boot change into boot grub and edit menu dot list and as you can see now this is why vi is quite useful to have um, it's not absolutely necessary to get the build going but it can certainly be useful to fix things that have gone wrong so if i just put insert clfs there and delete this save that and i'll reboot just to make sure that does in fact work okay the screen should come up soon Hopefully, yep, there it is. Okay, and we're in again. So, what I need to do now is to log in. And first thing I need to do is get GPM working. So, I've got a mouse here, but there's nothing happening. So, what I'll do is use command to start GPM manually. Normally this would have a boot script to start it, but we haven't got that pleasure at the moment. So these are the parameters that will work with generally any mouse, but if you've got something slightly uh, different, then you may have to change the protocol or the device even. So that's taken that, and if I move the mouse, it still isn't working for some reason. Um, so why was that? Okay, maybe something else I need to do in the kernel then. Uh, let's take my MPS two. Right, actually, this mouse could be a bit funny sometimes. Yeah, that's it. It was just a battery needed replacing or reseating rather. Okay, so. 
that's working. Let's check we've got the make flags visible. We have, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view the manual um, off the screen just so that I can be sure that I'm going in the right order because it's not immediately obvious um, uh, navigating the manual. But if I open up a new terminal, I'll go into the book, which was in sources. Um, and if you notice as well now, the partition we're in. Um, yeah, is is the one we've been building on. You can see the tools and tools too there. So if I go into sources and then uh, book and then x86. So this is the uh, location we put all these text files in. This, this is the book. Uh, I want to go into test suite tools was the next bit. Uh, and as you can see, it's not immediately obvious which is the next part that I should be reading. It's probably ch chapter. So uh, there's no less, but I could use Vi, or what I'll do is use more um, chapter.txt. So yeah, this is the table of contact contents, and that's all there is. So it might actually be more convenient to use Vi. This can go up and down. So yeah, the introduction, TCL, expect deja vu. So let's go to introduction next. And as it says, this chapter builds the tools needed by some packages to run tests, um, as I will be running them. So that's it. And as you can see, next is TCL. So I'll go into TCL next. And you can see the first command is here. And this is why it's a bit awkward um, using this text screen. It's a bit difficult to read. And that's another reason why I'm going to have a, a graphical browser on another terminal just to ensure that I don't actually miss any commands because they stand out obviously in the graphical um, screen more than they do um, on this text screen. So let me just check my notes to make sure I haven't missed anything else that needs to be done before we start building. Okay, yeah. Um, so yes, let's extract, just switching back to the virtual terminal one into the sources, extract TCL because that's the uh, package we're going to be building first. And oh, before I carry on, what I should do, we haven't got a top, um, we haven't got a free command, so I can't show you the memory layout or anything, but I can show you the kernel we've got and you can see um, here it says X 86 underscore 64 so we have got a 64-bit kernel running um, if you're ever unsure about whether your processor is capable of running 64-bit and you can't find the information on the internet this, this might be more convenient um, if you look for um, the two letters lm as the one of the flags okay we haven't got color on this and off. Yeah, I've got a UK keyboard right there. If you've got this, this LM on its own, that means long mode, I think it is, which means that the CPU is capable of supporting 64 bits on the Intel. So that's um, a good indication that you've got 64 bit support. I better remove that grep that I've just created, grep file. Um, but yeah, apart from that, at the moment, I can't think of anything else that would show what mode we're in. There might be something in the proc environments, but we've certainly got a 64-bit terminal uh, kernel, and we've got 64-bit uh, tools running. If we echo the path, you can see the path 
order is bin, then user bin, s bin, then user s bin, then tools bin and tools s bin. And if you remember, we were installing all the cross um, built uh, tools into tools and uh, the tools sub, uh, yeah, this tools directory. So currently, all the programs that we've built are in tools, but all the new ones will be going to bin, user bin, s bin, and user s bin. And then eventually when the system is deleted, uh, sorry, completed, we will be able to delete tools in theory because we should not be relying on anything in there to to support the system.